Hello, everyone. I'm sitting here at Kuma Hospital in Kobe, Japan, seated with Dr. Miyauchi. Dr. Miyauchi, welcome. Welcome to Kuma Hospital. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's, and it's nice to be here again. This is my third visit to mm -hmm. Kuma Hospital and Dr. Miyauchi. And in the past, we've done interviews about active surveillance. Oh, yes. And avoiding thyroid surgery. Mm -hmm. And as everyone watching knows, most of you know, that I had a thyroidectomy that did not go well. So I do advocate for avoiding surgery when possible. Mm -hmm. And it was why I initially reached out to Dr. Miyuchi because he is more or less the godfather of active surveillance. And today we're gonna to talk about, uh, for this video, uh, related to active surveillance, the laryngeal nerve. What happens when you cut the laryngeal nerve can it be avoided? And the answer is yes. Let's start there. Dr. Miyuchi, can the laryngeal nerve damage be avoided? Well, uh, the laryngeal nerve, we have the two uh, laryngeal nerves, right side and left side. It's uh, running very close to the thyroid. So during the thyroid operation, uh, laryngeal nerve, we try to find laryngeal nerves and uh, preserve the nerves, of course. But uh, if the, the disease is cancer, the cancer, thyroid cancer might involve uh, the laryngeal nerve. In such cases, the vocal cord might become paralysis because of the cancer invasion, or even if the uh, vocal cord is functioning uh, before pre uh, b before surgery. Uh, during surgery, the, the the current laryngeal nerve may be found being involved by thyroid cancer. In such cases, we try to preserve the nerve if possible, but sometimes we have to cut the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, to take off the uh, thyroid cancer. So in that case, uh, vocal cord on that side do not move. Uh, vocal cord uh, opens when you inhale, inhale, it, inhale. Well, inhale and it breathe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But when you make a uh, voice, vocal cord closes. Mm -hmm. And vocal cord moves open and close. The voice is not made but this movement. Mm -hmm. If the vocal cord closes, the air comes from the lung to mouth, and vocal cord vibrate up and down. And you can make a uh, voice. If the vocal cord is uh, paralyzed, vocal cord is not closed uh, completely. It makes some slit between the vocal cords. So air goes away. So you, can, you cannot make strong voice. Voice may become ah, horses, mm -hmm. something like that. And in such cases, uh, there are one solution is uh, reconstruction of the uh, rejected recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, we can anosmose the, the cut nerve end directly, end to end anosmosis suture, and or if the rejected segment is longer, we need to implant some set, uh, part of the nerve from some other nerve, you can put the nerve and bridge be between the, uh, be at, at the defect. Mm. So in that case, you need two sutures. And the other idea is uh, transferring different motor nerve. Motor nerve is nerve that goes to some muscle and transferring nerve to the uh, dissected site. That is much easier because we need only one suture. Dr. So Miyuchi, pause for a moment. 
You're saying that if the laryngeal nerve is severed, that it can be repaired? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, not completely, but uh, as I told you, after if you cut the recurrent laryngeal nerve and uh, you do not repair, the vocal cord becomes atrophy. Atrophy, become weak and do not close completely. This space between the vocal cords is open. That uh, causes the loss of the air during the phonation. So in that case, you can you you do not uh, you cannot make good voice. <sighs> loss of weight, weight, loss of air, and e even if he, uh, we repair the nerve. Either way, I mean the direct anastomosis, free nerve grafting, or nerve transfer, the movement of vocal cord do not recover. It is fixed in the medium. However, vocal cord recover from atrophy, and the space between the vocal cord becomes very narrow. Mm. So then the voice becomes good. The patient's voice becomes uh, nearly normal. Uh, usually after two or three months after the uh, re-innovation of the nerve. I think this is an important point because for patients that are going in for thyroidectomy, there's probably some questions they can ask the surgeon mm -hmm. uh, if they are prepared to try to repair mm -hmm. the laryngeal nerve mm -hmm. if it is severed because mm -hmm. many surgeon either is not aware that it can be repaired mm -hmm. or is not prepared mm -hmm. to repair it. What should the surgeon have in the operating room to prepare to repair mm -hmm. a severed laryngeal nerve? Well, uh, first of all, the all surgeons who are doing, going to do thyroid operation, uh, well, all surgeons are very aware that they should find the recurrent range of nerve and try to preserve the nerve. And now, recently, we, are, we, are, we can use uh, intraoperative neural monitoring system we can check the, the function of the return to range and nerve during the uh, thyroid surgery. Well, but the, during surgery, as I told you, uh, the recurrent range and nerve might be, might be a accidentally cut or the, we have to reject some portion of the recurrent laryngeal nerve due to cancer invasion. So we have to, the surgeon, I think, to my mind, the surgeon have to be mm, ready to do reconstruction surgery for the recurrent laryngeal nerve. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. And Dr. Miyuchi, and this hits home for me personally because my laryngeal nerve was cut, it was severed, and I ended up having to get a vocal cord implant. Mm -hmm. What about somebody like me years later after thyroidectomy, the nerve has been cut. Is there any hope either now or on the horizon that one day the nerve can be restored, the nerve activity for the laryngeal nerve? Well, uh, Philip, uh, I'm sorry for you, but uh, uh, the, if the recurrent laryngeal nerve is cut or sacrificed, I think uh, we should repair uh, the recurrent laryngeal nerve at the si same surgery. Later surgery, I mean the redo surgery, is uh, very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And in that case, if it is not uh, possible or not performed, the other way is uh, laryngeal nerve, uh, laryng vocal cord management, implant or something like that. Yes. That's uh, another way, but uh, I'm a thyroid surgeon, so I think we 
when we cut the return to range nerve, repairing the nerve at the same operation uh, is the best solution, I think. Mm. Dr. Miyuchi, great. As we wrap up this interview, mm -hmm. what do you feel, let's start with, what do you feel every patient should know about the laryngeal nerve during thyroidectomy? And then secondly, what should every surgeon know about laryngeal nerve and during thyroidectomy? Well, you know, the I am a uh, uh, endocrine surgeon uh, specialized to thyroid diseases and thyroid operations. Uh, all uh, surgeons at Kuma Hostel are very familiar with the, this technique, but uh, there are many surgeons who does thyroid operation occasionally, maybe less than uh, 10 cases per year. In such uh, cases, since for such uh, surgeons, I'm, I'm not sure how they uh, know about the, this uh, technique. I'm not sure. And so patients, I think in that answer, we have answered both. Uh, for a patient to really be in your own best interest to make sure your surgeon has experience mm -hmm. and not assume uh, that every surgeon is equal. Uh, I, think, I think that's really what it comes down to, yes? Well, honestly speaking, I do not know about the situation in the United States or in other world, and, but uh, honestly speaking, even in Japan, uh, there are many good uh, surgeons uh, knowing the, about this technique, but uh, and, uh, at the same time, there are many more, maybe, who are not so familiar with these techniques. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that is so, tool. so that's that's something for the patient to be be aware of, and for this interview about the laryngeal nerve, I guess there's one more way to avoid such a mishap. And that goes into the next interview, which if you would like to watch it or listen to it, if you'd like to watch it, click the link above. And that video has to do with active surveillance or doing no surgery at all. So that's one way to protect the laryngeal nerve. And let's talk in more detail in the next interview about active surveillance and the latest developments around the world about this topic. Dr. Lynch, thank you.